everybody, Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and welcome to another Around Town here on chicagojazz.com. I am uh, excited to have Anthony Bruno, the great saxophonist musician here from Chicago. He's got a ton of stuff going on, but we're going to focus specifically on two gigs that he's got coming up because it's pretty interesting. It's in two different locations, and it's for two different jazz series, which uh, everybody should know about anyways, because these are somewhat regular series, and it's great to have Anthony performing there. But first, how you doing, Anthony? Great to see you and catch up with you. I'm great. It's good to see you again, Mike. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's talk about these shows. Let me let me preview them here. So we got the Montreux Saloon which is on September 21st. And of course, Montrose Saloon is 2933 West Montrose Avenue. They've been doing a lot of jazz, actually, even during the pandemic, because they've been doing it outside. So this is a, mm-hmm. a cool spot that they've been able to keep keep happening. But this is actually part of the Fulton Street Collective series, and they're doing that. And uh, is there a name for this? I think it's it's uh, an Loud interesting... and Lucid. Loud and Lucid, yeah. Yeah, Loud and Lucid. That's an interesting name, I think. But anyways, Loud and Lucid. So that, that's going to be at the Montrose Street uh, Saloon. And then you've got uh, coming up on October 26th, you've got the at the Whistler. Of course, everybody knows the Whistler. That's 2421 North Milwaukee Avenue in Chicago. And you've got your trio there as well. And that's another interesting jazz series. I think that's an ongoing jazz series that they do relax attack jazz series. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about this Montrose Saloon gig. And I'm assuming maybe it's the same kind of music at both of them because it's with your trio. But talk a little bit about the trio, talk about who's in the trio and what people can expect to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I love this trio. This trio is uh, so much fun to play with. And they're, they're my brothers for sure. We've got John Sutton on bass and Alejandro Salazar on drum set. And the trio started as a pandemic era uh, way to get out and play. Um, you know, all the clubs had shut down and, and there was nowhere to play. And the only thing that was considered safe was to play outdoors. So, you know, John Sun and I, we decided, hey, we were going to play in Palmer Square, just kind of doing a duo thing. And Alejandro Salazar was like really interested and wanted to come out and play with us. And we just gelled right away. And we immediately knew like, oh, this works really well. Um, the music is, is so interactive and fun and playful but also like really energetic and thoughtful at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I personally love tenor trio. I love playing tenor, bass, and drums. Uh, nothing against the uh, accompanying <laughs> instruments, the pianos and the guitarists of the world. Um, but there's something so freeing without having a, an accompanying instrument like a piano or a guitar to really stretch and be free and do what you do. And so anyways, it, it gelled right away. And we were in Palmer Square for a few months, and uh, that that space got kind of taken over by a, a basically a, a music event that was coming into the into the square. And we know that we knew that we needed to relocate, so uh, we ended up in Logan Square, like right on the steps, oh, which is right. which which is far more punk rock, and and that's like where I wanted to be in the first place, and it's way more our vibe in any ways. Um, so we started doing that and that was like all last summer and that was a blast. You know, that, that gave us a chance to really gel and come together and, and like kind of develop a set and, and have a, a bit of a voice amongst the trio and find out like what we do, what, what really resonates for us, you know? And then uh, we went into the studio in November and we recorded uh, uh, and we have three singles coming out. Yeah. Uh, the first single came out last month and that was actually placed on a Spotify editorial playlist. So that was placed on the um, all new jazz Spotify editorial playlist. And that's an original of mine called Logan Steps. So you can find that on Spotify, Apple, et cetera. How did you name that one? It's bizarre. How did you ever come up with that name? (laughs) Wow, okay, that's kind of a long story. Uh, Basically, okay. So we played on the Logan. Yeah, I thought it was because you were playing on the Logan Steps. I was like, that's a great name. Well, here, this, this is how it happens. So it is roughly based off of the Cinderella tune. Um, so, so, uh, so this is love. If if you're familiar with the Cinderella soundtrack, I was randomly listening to it and I was like, oh, I love this melody. And um, kind of in the jazz world, there's something about like taking a ballad and playing it with like a kind of up-tempo vibe. And I was like, oh, it'd be cool to write a melody based on this tune. I think that would really work, you know? Um, so I wanted to call it Slipper on the Logan Steps, but that felt so wordy. 
So I was like, oh, I'm just going to call it Logan Steps. And, and it made sense. But I, I envisioned like Cinderella walking up the steps, losing ah. her slipper on the steps. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's a great story. I'm glad you told that story. So that's so that's the first single that just came out a month ago. And then you've got a couple more singles coming out. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the second single that's coming out September 23rd, I think that's what the Friday is. Um, that This one is entitled Blue Logan. And uh, that is based uh, roughly off of Mungo Santa Maria's uh, Afro Blue. Oh, yeah. And, um, ba you know, Alejandro, first of all, I, I love playing with both of my brothers, John and Alejandro. But Alejandro and I really, really locked in um, with with different Latin music influences. Um, he, because, you know, he brings a, a very specific flavor to the drum set that really works with what I want to do rhythmically. And cause I, I have like an obsession with Latin music personally. So our, our ability to lock in with that just like exploded in a, in a really good way. And so one of our favorites to do is, and, and we like kind of doing this in really any key, just kind of like after the end of a tune, vamping out on something. And then before you know it, we're playing Afro Blue, right? Um, so I wanted to write a tune roughly based off of like the feeling of when we would play Afro Blue. Nice. Well, you know, and, and just like you, I love uh, Afro-Cuban music, man, Brazilian music, Samba stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. It's just, it, you get that, the groove is infectious. And, yeah. you know, I, I produce a festival every year, the Deer Park Jazz Fest, and we close, we've been closing every year with the past four years, last year, two years ago, that was off because of the pandemic, but last year we did a smaller version. But anyways, and we close out with a, with a, usually with a Latin jazz group, because even if you're not into jazz, you love the grooves, man. It doesn't matter what's going on. As long as you feel it. So you get all these casual music fans that they just go nuts. And it's a great way, I think, to open the door to bring them in to explore other genres of jazz. But I mean, even even if they never do, just that whole feel. So I'm I'm with you. And I love that whole, I could listen to that stuff all day long, man. It's just, it grooves yeah. hard. So, so that, that's yeah, cool. That's like a huge element of what we do yeah. live. And it influences, you know, the, the trio is, I call it improvised music. It, it's hard to call it jazz music per se. Because um, so much of what we do when we're going from tune to tune, or even in the middle of tunes, is we just break things down and we just like vibe out and vamp out. And there, there's like this, this level of freedom that comes with that, that is like so necessary. And I felt, especially coming out of the pandemic, it was something that needed to be said musically, at least for me personally. And the trio facilitates that and allows that to happen. And, and that's why for me, it's like, I get the greatest joy of being able to play with this group because um, it, it truly lets me live, lets me breathe and be free again. Yeah. Well, you know, it reminds me of like, uh, you know, the Sonny Rollins trios back in the sixties. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that, yeah, that that's like some of the most free playing I've ever heard, even though they're playing over structured tunes. I mean, it's just, yeah. it just lends itself, especially when everybody has a like mind, which it sounds like everybody in your group does have a like mind. So they let things breathe and then they take it a different way and all that stuff. It takes a while to get that groove going. But once you find those three guys that can do that, yeah. it's, it's magic, you know, and it probably really, I mean, I know you do a lot of stuff. You do a lot of structured stuff. You do a lot of corporate things. You do a lot of different things like that. And you do a lot of teaching, and so those are all different elements and all different elements of music, but to be able to get with two other guys and really showcase everything that you're able to do and don't have any, oh, wait, I can't do that. I can't do this. It's just like, whatever. That's that I think is like something that all of a sudden brings everything out and probably puts you at a, at a well, some of your highest playing level, I would imagine doing that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there has to be the right vibe because every once in a while, you know, like maybe somebody can't make a trio hit because because we're still playing every Sunday. Um, we've kind of left the square and we're down on the boulevard now. Um, but every once in a while, you know, you have to get a sub And there. I mean, there's we, we live in a blessed town because there are so many yep. amazing musicians. And, it, and it's like very cool to like bring in different cats and see how the vibe is. But the vibe is never quite the same as it is with John and Alejandro, just because we have um, almost like our own language of communication that we've developed that, that only the three of us truly understand. And um, 
it it is it is very it's very special yeah yeah that well all right so everybody's got to go check out the trio you got two chances Please. you've got you've yeah. got Montro Montrose Saloon 921 so September 21st mm -hmm. and then Whistler October 26th what time are those shows do you know yeah the Montrose Saloon show is at 10 p.m and the Whistler show is at 9 p.m okay 9 p.m and 10 p.m so I'll put all this stuff up. You'll see it down below. It's probably going right now. But anyways, and we'll link everything up. But we should, before I let you go, we should talk a little bit because you, you have such an extensive background. You're also into education. You're also, um, you know, not not to not to uh, get too far down the wormhole because you and I could probably talk about this for like two hours is the educational stuff and teaching and, and influencing the young and all that stuff. But you're the music department head and jazz chair at Chicago High School for the Arts, which is an incredible, incredible high school for the arts. I mean, you you just did a gala over at Epiphany and I was able to be there working mm -hmm. on some of that. And just the musicianship just blows me away for high school kids. So that's gotta be something special. But I mean, what's it like? I mean, you're teaching kids that can play already. So that's an exciting, exciting situation to begin with. I mean, you find yourself pushing them obviously but maybe sometimes as you're teaching you're probably going hey wait a minute because you have to explain everything to them that you can play i would imagine and then you're probably finding new stuff out about your playing absolutely education is, is a huge uh element of what i consider being a musician hmm. um i you know eat sleep breathe and live music right and part of that is um, whether you're performing it or talking about it or teaching it or whatever, it's all just one and the same. So I see performing like teaching and I see teaching like performing. It's about making connections and inspiring people to um, love music or to want to connect with music. So for me, when I'm working with the, you know, my students at Shy Arts, um, it is all about getting them energized and excited to want to learn music. Um, Getting, making them um, excited to do the work and want to truly study the art form. And, you know, teaching in Chai Arts is a huge part of my identity. I mean, I'm there, this is my 13th year now, you wow. know, that I've been at Chai Arts. And I've, I've had the, the wonderful pleasure of working with so many amazing musicians, um, musicians that are in New York, musicians that are in LA, music, musicians that are in Chicago, who are all out there doing it. Um, one of the most well-known ones is Joel Ross, who was um, one of our, our first graduating class, um, Blue Note Records. Yeah. Um, but we, just we we get students who have um, a, a strong passion for music and the arts, and those are uh, amazing students to work with. And, and I'm very fortunate to get to work with them because I know that there are other situations where, you know, half the battle is just getting them to to take the instrument out of the case, right? Um, you know, my students make my job easy because they, they do want to be there. They do want to learn. Yeah. And we get to talk and, and work on some, some really interesting and cool things. You know, I can go deeply into music theory in my beginner jazz combo class, right? Uh, we can listen, like for Sonny Rollins' birthday yesterday or two days ago, uh, we in my saxophone technique class, our, our saxophone studio just for an hour listened to different Sonny Rollins studio, uh, solos. And we got to talk about them and the eras that he was in yeah. from the late 50s stuff to the 60s stuff to the 80s stuff to the 90s stuff. And that's hard to do in most other places. But uh, Shy Arts is this, this beautiful place where you can really go deeply into the art form and the students will go there with you and they are excited and they love being there. And quite frankly, they push me too. They will say, hey, hey, Mr. Bruno, we want to do such and such tune. And I go, wow, I haven't checked that tune out in a while. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got to go back. Hold on, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like we were just doing Humpty Dumpty and I'm like, oh, this oh, tune yeah. is tough. You know, hold on, I got I to go practice, hold on. Uh, so we're, I am, I'm very fortunate and blessed to, to be able to, uh, to work with the students at Chai Arts. Well, and it's pretty incredible that we actually have a high school like that in Chicago. Um, you know, and, and to your point, and, and it's a shame too, but to your point, the kids want to be there. So they're taking the instruments mm -hmm. out and they're doing it. I mean, when I used to teach, you know, I had the students that would show up and they would be there. They hadn't practiced, but you know, if they stuck around long enough, at some point, 
you could you could break through and get them to start doing something because you'd inspire them because they wouldn't be coming there for for no reason they're inspired that's just getting them going but to be able to like walk in day one and say you know you're at shy R's here obviously you want to be here so let's get moving i mean the amount of and i always say this and i you know i'm sure you probably agree with me when people take lessons as opposed to learning on their own when they take lessons or get instruction they get like six months worth of information in like one lesson that they would be taking forever to get mm -hmm. so to be able to be consumed in that in a high school is just it's incredible and the musicians that you guys are turning out over there it's really it's really unbelievable thanks mike and, and one other thing i wanted to add for any of our our young listeners out there who are even considering going to Shy Arts. Another thing that is so important to Shy Arts and, and our model is that we take novice students and it is so important as part of our mission to take novice students. As you know, there's not many band and orchestra programs in CPS for elementary age students. So right. a lot of our a lot of our band and orchestra students, they have um, they, we consider them novices, which is like little to no formal training. And um, we pride ourselves on those students. And those are my favorite students to work with. And we get to fast track them, right? Because they're getting a conservatory education coming from sometimes little to no training to a conservatory music education. It's really amazing. Yeah. Well, congratulations on all of that. And I mean, I'm sure you're going to be there for quite a while still and uh, keep turning out the great musicians. But of course, Wonderful to see that you're playing some some gigs out here with the trio at uh, Montrose mm -hmm. Saloon on September 21st. Obviously, Whistler, October 26th. All the information, by the way, everybody that's watching and listening to this is anthonybrunomusic.com. He's got a great website up there, all of his recordings and everything else. You can get all the information. And Anthony, thanks for jumping on with us today. I really appreciate it. And I am going to start a series at some point about music education, not for the educators, but for the musicians and for the students that want to be. So I'm going to I'm going to bug you to come back on. We'll talk about that at some point. Yeah, I'll be back. All right. Awesome. And of course, thanks for watching and listening to this uh, around town here with Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com. All the information is at chicagojazz.com as usual. And until next time, hopefully I will see you guys somewhere out on the scene.